God of Thunder or the God of Hammers. Apparently, the new Thor Love and Thunder is the God of tanking at the box office, being hailed as the second worst Marvel movie ever made, right next to The Eternals. The film had fans completely divided and almost destroyed the entire Thor franchise. So let's see what's going on. Firstly, why didn't fans like the new Thor? Thor Love and Thunder is the latest in a long line of Thor movies that was just released and is coming to Disney Plus this September. But you're going to have to lower your expectations since it ultimately received a critic rating of 65% on Rotten Tomatoes, which is actually a bit better than what most fans had in mind for it. Fans bashed it for the low quality and rushed CGI, which some fans pointed out looked like Snapchat filters put over the characters. The extreme dependence on punchline jokes every two seconds had already gotten tiring after the last movie and really took away from any serious moment in the film. Oh, and what ticked us off the most? A huge lack of screen time for Christian Bale's Gore the God Butcher and Natalie Portman's Jane Foster, which were two of the main reasons fans wanted to show up for the film. Love and Thunder really ended up feeling unimaginative and repetitive in every which way. Even the characters weren't done justice. Jane wasn't interesting at all, even though we know Portman is a hard-hitting actress. She just felt like a forceful inclusion for women empowerment in the story and didn't fit in. And as for Gore, we had our hopes up for him being the baddest of the big bads after Thanos. But he barely had any screen time and even when he did appear, it felt like he was just there to let Thor be the good guy again. Chris Hemsworth was actually fine, considering everybody else. He used his deadpan delivery and his grandiose aura to remind us how good of a Thor he is. But his pomposity and childishness had turned into a gimmick overused by the director pretty soon. The film goes through the sensory system without leaving anything meaningful behind at all. But it did end up making almost $700 million at the box office, making it one of the best motion pictures to be delivered for this year. Now, let's talk about what does this mean for Taika Waititi in the MCU. Halfway through the movie, you should feel Taika Waititi's hammer hit you on your head as the movie refuses to take itself seriously. The New Zealand-born actor and director was actually one of the best directors for the MCU until the box office tank. When he came on to Thor Ragnarok, he single-handedly changed the direction of every single movie that came after it and managed to change the genre of Marvel completely. Ragnarok was great. Waititi brought a change of pace to the Marvel structure, bringing his signature wacky colors and 80s-inspired themes. But as everyone realized, it could only be stretched out for so long. Even Mark Ruffalo, the Incredible Hulk actor, appeared in an interview and subtly hinted that he thought giving so much freedom to directors is what's been getting the MCU stuck in the drains. Taika Waititi managed to turn a lovable character like Thor from a god into a joke used one too many times. So the Jojo Rabbit director announced that he thought it was best if he didn't return for the making of Thor 5, after it was teased at the end of the movie that the characters would all return. Waititi admitted that he didn't feel like fans liked his comedic artfulness anymore, and it was time for a change of direction. The filmmaker actually has a lot of other projects going on, and some have been critically acclaimed, like Jojo Rabbit, so we're sure to be seeing him do what he does best, just away from the Thor franchise. Though it is confusing what we fans actually want with the character, as Waititi's comedic take grew old for us too quickly. Kenneth Branagh's original Thor 1 and even Alan Taylor's Thor The Dark World received terrible views for being too dark. It makes us wonder that perhaps Marvel should let the actor rest. Will we see Hemsworth reprise his role after this? When the rumors went public of Taika Waititi backing away from Thor, it had fans divided. Many exploded on the internet with joy and shared their reactions on Twitter with memes dunking on the director's handling of the series. But many, like us, were worried for the future of the beloved character. Although the end credit scenes boldly stated that Thor will return, it seems unlikely as of now. So let's go through some of our expert theories on how the blonde-haired and lightning-blue-eyed god will return. The end credits showed how Zeus was actually still alive, and he sent his his son, the legendary Hercules, to kill Thor. If you've read some Marvel comics, you'll remember that Hercules is one of Thor's biggest rivals, and we could potentially be seeing them return in a Greek vs. Norse mythology spin-off, although it's very likely that Thor 5 will do just that. Even if the Thor franchise is some ways away from being continued, we speculated that we might be seeing him return in the second season of Loki on Disney+. Tom Hiddleston is going to continue being one of the main players in the universe, and it's only a matter of time before we get to see Chris Hemsworth worth too, maybe as a variant of himself. In other related news, first off, Brett Goldstein's potential in the MCU. However gripping as Chris Hemsworth Thor may be, his new film, Love and Thunder, presented tough opposition, Brent Goldstein's Hercules. 
So what will the superhero's future contain in the MCU? Perhaps when Hercules tries and fails at killing Thor, he'll have some sympathy towards him and might set him up with a spot on the Earth's mightiest superheroes team, the Avengers. Definitely a fitting reward for trying to murder the God of Thunder. He's a long way from being the next hero in line to make it onto the MCU, officially as Eternals presented Eros and Pip the Troll, who again are in undisclosed roles in their future. However, Marvel Studios president Kevin Feige has said they have plans for them. We're hoping the same applies to Brett Goldstein, as in terms of acting, he's much more qualified than Harry Styles at least. Now on to the director for the Fantastic Four movie announced. The heavily awaited Fantastic Four movie finds its director in Matt Shackman as the original choice. John Watts, who worked on all the recent Spider-Man films, drops out to take a break from superhero stuff. Shackman is most popular for his work in series instead of movies really, having worked on the hit Disney Plus series WandaVision, Game of Thrones, Succession, Mad Men, Six Feet Under, The Boys, House MD, Fargo, and It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Judging from all these hits, you can see why we're excited. As die-hard fans of the US version of The Office, we were hyped to see John Krasinski make his debut as Mr. Fantastic slash Reed Richards, but after watching him die in Multiverse of Madness, we're not so sure he's coming back. Even as directors described his role as a test run for the actor in the Marvel Universe. Although we're literally going to boycott the movie if the role goes to anyone else. So, your move Marvel. Finishing off with Christian Bale's upcoming movie. Netflix has revealed the first look at Scott Cooper's new film, The Pale Blue Eye, featuring the gore the God Butcher actor himself, Christian Bale. The movie has been in production for literally over 10 years, so we're really excited to see the actor return. The series is a gothic horror thriller set in the 1830s, and the plot revolves around a series of fictional murders that are taking place in the United States military. Bale plays a retired New York City police detective, assigned to the case, while he's trying to get by as a normal citizen. The new pictures revealed show an unshaven Bale strolling through creepy fog with the lamp clutched in his hands. It's giving Edgar Allan Poe vibes, which seems alright as Poe is actually a person in the film played by Harry Melling. The Pale Blue Eye is Bale's third collaboration with the director after the 2013 crime show Out of the Surface and the 2017 Western Hostels. Cooper's last film was the horror thriller Antlers, featuring Kerry Russell and Jesse Plemons. These kinds of roles are literally what he does best, and we can't wait to see him as a rustic and aged detective on Netflix soon. The film releases on the 6th of January. And that's a wrap for this video. Thanks for watching. What did you think of Thor Love and Thunder? And would you like to see the actor return? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you in the next one.